Welcome back to another video. Today's video is about customizing GNOME 45 on Nabora because Nabora no longer comes with a whole bunch of extensions. It no longer looks like it used to. It used to look like Windows and now it doesn't and I want to get you back to what that looks like. But we're also going to be doing it two ways. One, to look like macOS or have the functionality of macOS and two, the functionality of a taskbar in a Windows-like environment. And the first thing we're going to do is grab what's called Extension Manager. Well, what makes this special is you can download all the extensions you need from within the app itself. And we actually grab this from inside the GNOME software store like this. Type in extensions and it should be the first thing that pops up. Hopefully. Yeah, there it is. And you're going to just click install and it's going to be a flat pack. Okay. And flat packs are perfectly fine. It's not going to need any extra permissions or anything else. Now, by default, user themes are installed. Okay. We're going to grab extension list. And the reason being is because it allows us to easily manage our extensions. Next thing we're going to grab is app indicator and K status notifier item support. This will give us back our tray icons. And then after this, we need to start searching. So for the Windows experience, we're going to grab dash to panel. Okay. Which live panel? That's a weird one. And it's doing it again. No, it's not. Okay, we're good. This application used to have a bug where even if you search for the proper terms, the proper terms would not follow up. So you'd have to search something like panel to get dash to panel really annoying. Anyway, look, we have a bar at the bottom. Isn't it pretty? We're going to grab arc menu because most of you are probably used to a start menu like that. See, totally having code and overload right now. These applications are hard to load sometimes into the system directly, but there you have it. <clears throat> and I know most of you are used to blur on your, uh, you know, your taskbar. So we're going to install blur to shell. And it didn't do anything. One second. Ah, oh, no, it crapped out again. See, this is a problem. Sometimes applications like this just don't want to do anything. A different version was loaded previously. You need to log out for it to change effects. Okay, well, we'll get to that. Let's do the rest of it, okay? We're going to grab what's called just, <laughs> just perfection. And this is used for customizing things like this. Notice how my icons and my clock and everything else are a little neater and more squished together. Yeah, that's what I have that for. Now we're going to grab another thing called dash to panel and we'll be turning that on later. Dash to panel basically bash, bash to dock, my bad, uh, basically gives you a dock instead, which is right there. Stop encoding overload. How rude. It gives us a dock. We're going to turn that off for now. Can I not do anything without you throwing a fit OBS? Cease and desist. Okay, so we have our menu. And look at the funky little animations. I'll go over the settings for this real soon. Our clock is in the proper position. All of this is in the proper position. And yeah, it looks good so far. So with the blur... It makes everything look so much better and it's hard not to deal, not to like have it. It's just like, it's a, it's a next level type thing you'll want because it just makes everything look so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my downloads. We're going to go over to blur my shell right here and I'm just going to do make install. Okay. There we go. I'm going to log out and I'm going to log back in. And I'm going to show you uh, Blur My Shell, okay? I'll be right back. Alright, we're back. And I'm going to just quickly enable this. Disable this at the same time. There we go. So now it's blurry looking. It looks like it's built in. It's beautiful. And you can see everything a whole lot cleaner. Which matters. Because having a clean desktop is definitely something that's important. Now, it shows on all monitors when you do your thing, and I don't like that. I ended up just switching it to my primary monitor. That way, we don't have multiple versions on different monitors. But you can do that if you're one of those people, okay? Oh my. So here's the thing. 
by default, that will be shown. That opens up this. And I don't find that it works very well with this, but it does work pretty well with the dock. So when it's disabled, you have this. It's a much better look. Now, by default, um, it looks like this, which is a pad too big, so I end up putting it right there. That looks good. And if we go to style, you'll notice my app margin is almost all the way down. Uh, and this is usually default to 8. And so is this. And that doesn't look good. And off does not look good either. So setting this to 4 takes up more space. And it uses all the space necessary to you. Which is really good. Because that's too much. And that's just right. It all depends on what you, you want. But in a nutshell, uh, this is definitely what I want. And if you want to override the color of your dock, you can do that. Say I want a purple theme. Set purple. Actually, let's go with blurple. Yeah. You could do that too. Uh, you can also override you know, the transparency value and everything like that. Make it look really good. Uh, you can add a a gradient theme which is kind of cool <laughs> it's not letting me probably because I have that on now oh, there we go so say I want this and I want this I can have it but we're currently blurred so you can only partially see it but this is how you can totally get a Windows Vista type style like there Take a look. Now we got a purple theme going on. It's nice, right? You also got your metro indicators, dots and squares and things like that. Um, I want circles, but metro's fine, I guess. Uh, behavior. Show favorite applications, secondary panels, running applications. There's just a whole bunch of stuff in here. Isolate workspaces. You can fine tune the tray font size, whatever you need to do. Uh, the tray item padding, animate things like this. This is pretty cool. I like this. You could just do whatever you need to do. All right. Now, this looks clean. I like this, but I'm also the type of guy that doesn't like this because I am more used to this. Uh, by the way, if you have that bug, it's because of that. So there, we fixed it partially. This is the way that I have things. And the reason being is because my whole workflow is down here and I still have my menu up here and everything up where I need it to be because I'm used to looking up to the top and up to the right and down to the bottom. Always have been, always will be. It's because I first had a Mac when I was a kid, so I'm sort of just like stuck there and I'm glad that we're able to do that No. And as you can see, I'm missing two things which I did not install. And I'm going to go and reinstall them right now. System plus. So system stat plus. Plus this. That was loud. We're going to mute that. Okay. It allows you to tell your overall system usage and your core usage. If we go to media. I'm going to install that which will pop up here in the center when I open up music. And I want to do that for you. I'm going to open up a song. See? Nice. And these will also apply to when you're in the dash mode as well. There's a lot more uh, extensions that you could use, but going the minimum is the best route. These are what we're using, and these are what works. Now... I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share the video. This works on Arch Linux. This works on Ubuntu. This works on Fedora, Nabora. Uh, should work on OpenSUSE and Debian as well. If Debian has anything updated, which I highly doubt, but if it does, yay for a illusional, stable experience. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Leave a comment below.